Python seems to be the fastest growing programming language. It is also widely used to program Raspberry Pis, and it is on the verge to become available on our small microcontrollers. Has the time come to leave the Arduino IDE and go on? Time for a closer look. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. If we trust this Stack Overflow post, Python is a growing language, and Adafruit invests a ton of money into their dialect of MicroPython. A typical maker's perspective is, he currently uses Arduino, wants to have fun with programming, but also wants to know about trends. After this video, you should be able to have a solid opinion. First thing, I hope we will not continue religious wars. I firmly believe there is no right or wrong programming language. Everybody can choose and be happy with his favorite. By the way, if you know Python, you can skip small parts of the video. Maybe you are interested in how Adafruit implemented the programming interface to these small boards. It is quite interesting in my opinion. I will cover these three topics and compare them with the current Arduino IDE environment. The language itself, parts of the hardware and programming interface, libraries, documentation and community. Fun for me means challenges, but not too much hassle. And this is why I used Adafruit's implementation, tools and boards for this comparison. To make it clear from the beginning, I bought the boards myself and never had any contact with Adafruit up till now. Let's start with the languages. There are two significant differences between Python and C++, the language used in the Arduino IDE. If you look at the code, Python looks more like an English text and C++ used in the Arduino IDE looks more cryptic. Python often is considered to be a higher level language and C++ a language closer to the machine. The second big difference is on how these two languages are translated into executable binary commands which are understandable by our microcontrollers. The sketch in the Arduino IDE is stored on our PC and it uses a compiler which also runs on our PC. Every time we hit upload, it takes some time to create a binary file which then is uploaded via serial connection to the microcontroller. The flash memory of the MCU is completely overwritten every time we upload new code. As we all know, this takes time, especially if we forgot to choose a high speed for serial. MicroPython, on the other hand, runs on the microcontroller itself, not on the PC. It has to be installed before we can start and it stays there. As soon as we change our code, MicroPython takes it, translates it into a bytecode and stores it in RAM. Also on the MCU. MicroPython then executes this bytecode from RAM. This is why the size of RAM is far more critical for MicroPython than for C++. Does all of that make a difference? Yes, a big difference. MicroPython behaves very much like an interpreter language. You enter a statement and it immediately executes it. No formal compiling needed. If I want to set the NeoPixel to green, I key these two commands and as soon as I hit enter, the pixel is green. With Arduino, we would have to compile and upload the code every time we want to change the color. For me as a maker, this is a very nice feature at the beginning of a project where I want to play around with hardware. Much faster and more convenient. How does it work if we want to use a program? As said, in Arduino, the sketch always stays on the PC and only the binary file is uploaded to the flash of the micro. In MicroPython, the code is stored on the microcontroller, which has advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is that you lose your code if you mess with your micro. This was often the case when I played with Mongoose, a JavaScript environment for microcontrollers. And it was the main reason I never presented it on this channel. I lost my newest code several times during a day. This was the main reason I chose Adafruit's environment for a start. They use a SAMD21 or 51 chip which offers native USB connectivity. 
For my today's tests, I use a Feather M0 Express board. If you plug it in, it shows up as a disk drive on your PC, with the name CircuitPy. The drive already contains some files, and we will see this drive is a great idea and makes our work enjoyable. To properly work with the board, we also need software on our PC. Adafruit recommends Moo, I hope I pronounce it right, for that purpose. By the way, Moo is free, open source, can also be used for other processes and is also written in Python. Moo has a code selection and a serial monitor in one window, similar to the Arduino IDE. To get you an impression on the two languages, I use a standard Blink program. We all know the C++ code. It consists of a setup and a loop part. In setup, we define the pin mode and in the loop, we write to this pin and wait for a period. How does that code look in Python? We first have to import some libraries that we can use the hardware of the board. Then, as with Arduino, we define the pin and the pin mode, here called direction. There is no setup or loop. This while statement creates an indefinite loop. And we do not have any curly braces. Python reads the code as we would read a text. All intended code belongs to the while loop. We also need four statements in the loop. One thing we do not need in Python, the declaration of variables. In C++, we first have to declare a variable as int, float, etc. Python does not require this step. This might be easier for beginners. For me, there is no significant difference between these two examples. I can live with both. For a beginner, it might be a little more comfortable without the curly braces. In my opinion, there are more important differences as we will see later. The name of the code is code.py because this is the code CircuitPython starts after boot. As soon as we press save, the LED starts to blink. Much, much faster than with Arduino. If we change the timing and press save again, it is immediately applied. Cool. If we want a debug message, we enter a print statement and hit save and it immediately shows in serial monitor. Extremely cool. All this is possible because of this small disk which is created by the Feather Express board. Moo only saves the file on the disk and Python on the board restarts with a new sketch as soon as it is changed. The libraries and everything else stays on the MCU for the whole project. We cannot discuss MicroPython without mentioning REPL. This is the abbreviation of read, eval, print. This is the normal user interface for MicroPython and with other boards we would have started with this REPL because they do not offer a disk. On these boards the code is uploaded to the board using REPL. We get to REPL if we press Ctrl C and we get back to program execution by pressing Ctrl D. In REPL, we work directly with the board and can, as shown before, directly execute commands. For example, we can import the board's library and then display all available pins with the command dir board. For sure, this is faster than the Arduino programming cycle, where we always have to compile and upload the whole code. One of the worst chapters of C++ in the Arduino IDE, especially for beginners, is string handling. Dealing with strings is hard for non-programmers like me, especially if you have to deal with libraries which are written by real programmers and where pointers come into play. String handling was not important in the old days when we wrote code to manage pins. But today, with all the user interfaces and the connectivity, we more and more have to deal with strings, even when we call web services and decode the answer. For me, this is definitely easier in Python. It does more or less what you expect, similar to the string type in Arduino. Let's be t equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we want a substring, we only write this command. If we want to find the number 3, the command is like that. 
we can combine the two and type this command, which returns minus 1, because 3 does not appear in position 4 to 8. Let's take a more complicated string and define t equals dear board. We can print it without sprintf conversions. And if we print t5, we get a surprising result. Python did not store the pins as a string. It saved it as a list. Interesting. Of course, there are much more differences and details to be mentioned. For example, also that Python has a garbage collector which frees unused memory. But this is stuff for other channels and maybe even for another video on this channel. The next big thing is libraries. A big plus for the Arduino platform because we find a library for most of our devices. Quite a few of the well-known libraries come from Adafruit and they did an excellent job in porting many of those libraries to CircuitPython. For the moment, I do not know if MicroPython libraries are compatible with CircuitPython. But you also find a lot of libraries for MicroPython. But still, Arduino is ahead and you have to check for the needed libraries before you start your project. By the way, on the Express boards, you can load all available Adafruit libraries, including all example files on the board and keep it there for the whole project. There is enough space available. Like that, you do not lose any time to search for or upload if you need a new library in your code. What about documentation and support? The documentation of CircuitPython and its hardware is excellent. It only took me a few minutes to get everything up and running. When I started, I downloaded the wrong initial file for my board and just got a disk space of 50k. This gave me the opportunity to test the support. I went to Adafruit's Discord channel and got help in less than 5 minutes. This channel seems to be very active with lots of users. Summarized, the decision of Adafruit to use the SAMD processors with native USB support increases the usability of Python on microprocessors, especially for beginners. And it raises the comfort and development speed for the rest of us. The most significant difference between CircuitPython and the Arduino IDE is the fact that Python behaves like an interpreter language. People in my age might be reminded at our beginnings with BASIC, just without the go-to statement and without line numbers. Python is considered to be a higher level language than C++, which means that it has some powerful commands which have to be explicitly programmed in C++. On the other hand, CircuitPython needs more resources and runs slower than C++, especially RAM can become an issue. This is why I would not run it on an ESP8266. I would start with an ESP32 with PS RAM. A version of MicroPython exists which can use PS RAM. The code structure in both languages is very similar. MicroPython reminds me more of English, C++ looks more like code. Arduino has much more available libraries. Arduino IDE supports many boards, especially the ESP8266 and the ESP32. CircuitPython for the moment mainly runs on Adafruit's hardware. They ported it to the ESP8266 and planned to port it on the Nordic NRF52 platform. Maybe Espressif looks at these SAMD chips and adds a USB interface to their ESP32 chips as well? Who knows? MicroPython is also ported to a few other platforms. The documentation of CircuitPython is proper and the support on Discord was good for me. The main reason for starting this endeavor was the announcement that Adafruit wants to port CircuitPython on the Nordic platform. Viewers know that I am disappointed about the BLE performance of the ESP32 with the Arduino IDE. I will closely monitor the development of this branch as these Nordic chips are very good on BLE and I am still interested in this technology. Most probably this was not the last time you heard of MicroPython on this channel. What is your experience with Micro or CircuitPython? Do you use it and on which platform? 
or do you have plans to use it in the future? I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.